Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to speak to you today on the invitation of Ms. Olga Stefanishina, Vice Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration of Ukraine. The war in Ukraine is having global impacts on people, on families, on the world's stability. And it's a constant feature of my work with the enormous environmental damage Ukraine is suffering. Ukraine became the first non-EU country to coordinate the activities of the 14 countries in the Danube Basin that make up the Danube strategy. This shows a firm commitment to engage, reinforce and take a leading role in pushing European cooperation. It also underscores the attractiveness of this macro-regional strategy, which offers cooperation on an equal footing between our member states and our neighbours. On 23rd of June this year, the European Council granted Ukraine and Moldova the status of candidates for accession to the EU. This decision is a strong signal showing consensus that the EU's door for membership is open. I expect the Danube strategy will help them in pursuit of this objective. This macro-regional collaboration brings enormous benefits to the region. The strategy has helped improve water status, reinforcing the integration of river basin management, planning and flood risk prevention. By facilitating fish migration, it helped save the Danube's sturgeon. It also contributed to improved nav navigability and to simplifying and digitalizing border crossing procedures. These are fields where success depends on communication. There are still outstanding challenges and several member states are still struggling with pollution. The Commission is doing all it can to improve the situation, offering funding, opportunities and facilitating exchanges of good practice. And when necessary, we also take the legal route with enforcement action to ensure that citizens are protected. Because of the Russian military aggression against Ukraine, we introduced changes to a number of Commission programs. We count 13 cross-border and two transnational cooperation programs that have so far been affected. While solidarity and cooperation on the EU borders with Ukraine is reaching new heights, collaboration with Russian Federation and Belarus has long been suspended. The Commission acted fast. For the 2021-2027 programming period, 26 million euros initially earmarked for Russia and Belarus were immediately transferred, strengthening cooperation with Ukraine and Moldova. Our priority is the adoption of the six Interreg Next programs 2021-2027 with Ukraine and Moldova, together with the transnational Danube region program by the end of this year. The Commission has also proposed a new regulation to smooth the implementation uh, challenges of the disrupted 2014-2020 cooperation and to alleviate the financial burden on Ukrainian beneficiaries. The proposal brings legal certainty and flexibility, allowing the use of the program's financial liquidity to support new challenges like migration. It also comes with a new mechanism to ensure that previous cooperation projected with Russia and Belarus can be completed as one-sided projects. One last point about positive cooperation. Ukraine has been granted full membership in the LIFE program this year. The negotiations have been recently opened on the accession to the LIFE program with Moldova. That means it can now benefit from LIFE support to help restore its environment after the destruction brought about by the Russian invasion. The support will be very broad for pollution, destruction of ecosystems or other long-term effects. My thanks to the Slovak government and to the town of Košice for hosting this event. Your assistance to Ukraine is an excellent example of human compassion. That's the spirit that is bound to prevail, together with the remarkable solidarity of so many member states present today. Thank you all and best wishes for today.